Hi there, I'm Siobhan. This is Art Skills Online. I teach figure drawing and focus on a very natural, responsive and gestural approach to drawing the figure. In this video, I want to talk about the one book that I use for figure drawing. The only book really that I think I've ever really relied on. I use it as a reference, as a guide and a support to my daily drawing practice. And that's this book, The Natural Way to Draw. I'm going to first of all talk about how you can use this book, how to approach it, because when you do open it up, you notice the first thing that you notice is that it's full of quite rigorous and demanding drawing schedules. So I want to talk a little bit about ways that I can suggest that you approach using this book. And then afterwards, I want to talk about why this book is so important, why you should have it if you're at all interested in figure drawing or even just in learning how to draw, why you should have it beside you at all times. Nicolades was a brilliant art teacher. He taught at the Art Student League in New York in the 1930s. He's probably, I think, one of the first art teachers to actually form formalize or formulate gesture drawing and contour drawing as an approach to learning how to draw the figure. I mean, there was obviously gesture and contour beforehand, but he was really the first teacher to bring that into a kind of a rigorous approach to drawing the figure. This book is actually based on his lectures at the Art Student League and his sort of classes that he taught. It's kind of a compendium of his approaches and his lectures. In fact, he, he actually died very, very young. I think he was 47 or something like that when he died and he died before the book was finished, before he had a chance to really finalize it. So it really is a almost, oh, I won't say unedited, a transcript of his classes but it's pretty much a very faithful kind of copy or faithful collection of his lectures and along with that the first thing that you notice when you open the book like with every chapter and with every exercise there's a very detailed timetable that he's included and you're supposed to try and follow these timetables um, and schedules but it all gets a little bit overwhelming and very complicated very quickly for example there's schedule five, A, B, C, D, E, and then he'll say something like, uh, draw for 12 hours as directed in schedule five, B to E. I will be honest, I've never really followed any of those schedules. Um, I, may, I may have done so through a figure drawing or a life drawing class where I think my life drawing teacher used to work with this book very closely. But if you are learning if you're self-taught, self-directed, and just learning to draw the figure on your own, I think it's a bit unreasonable to expect you to follow a schedule like that on a daily basis. So schedules aside, the other aspect of this book is a series of exercises. And again, that's something that when you at first glance might put you off because you'll notice while some of the exercises are very applicable to somebody who's, you know, drawing on their own, Quite a few of the exercises in the book require that you have a model to work with. These are exercises that are very specific to a live figure drawing session where, for example, you can direct the model to move while you're drawing or you can get students to sit at right angles to the model, all that kind of thing. But, you know, as I say, on your own, that's not something that you're going to be able to do. And for that reason, you might think this book is not something that you could, you would necessarily be interested in. But there are exercises here that are super relevant to your drawing practice and to learning how to draw. And you can easily follow those exercises using a different subject matter or using photo reference. The exercises and the schedules are very, very specific and can be a little bit intimidating. So I wanted to suggest another way to use this book. And that is to simply read it from start to finish. Read it like you would any other textbook or reference material.
There's so much to this book beyond the exercises and the schedule, like incredibly brilliant insights into the processes of how to learn to draw and how to draw the figure. This book in its ideas and concepts about learning how to draw is one of the richest sources that I know of. And reading this through will give you an amazing insight into what gesture drawing is or what contour drawing is. And it just, I think it will never cease to give you a wellspring of inspiration and ideas about your own drawing. And beyond that, it gives you a really clear understanding of how you can learn to draw and develop your own natural responses to what you see and observe. Just to underscore that, or to repeat myself, this way of teaching you how to draw doesn't teach you a set of techniques or a recipe for drawing. This book teaches you ways to develop your own response, your own artistic response, your own natural response through drawing. And that's really what gesture drawing is at the end of the day. Gesture and contour are not techniques in and of themselves. They're actually paths to follow in order for you to develop your own natural way of drawing. Like your instinct, you know, it's about developing your instinct for what you see and how you express what you see. So that's how I would recommend using this book. I recommend getting it, getting it today and just reading it from start to finish and understanding the ideas and the concepts that he's talking about. You know, don't worry too much about the schedules. Don't worry too much about the exercises. Try as much as you can to work with the exercises that he outlines, but simply read it from start to finish. So now I'll talk about why you should get this book. Why I think you should is precisely because this book will teach you a natural and responsive way of drawing. That's so important, I think. Um, if you are only to study academic drawing or Barg drawing or the Loomis method or whatever, and you never explored expressive drawing or your own natural response to observation, you know, then I think your work could sort of be indistinguishable from any other academic drawing. Maybe that's your, that's your aim or your goal, but I think the world needs to see your voice, needs to see your expression to kind of paraphrase Florent Farge, um, as an artist, you're not supposed to draw what everyone sees. You're supposed to draw what you see. And that's what this book teaches you. So that's why I think you should get it, why I highly recommend it. So on the back of the book, there's a quote taken from the text. It says, there is only one right way to draw, and that is a perfectly natural way. And I just want to point out that's actually a typo. <laughs> I don't know how the publishers got, they made a bit of a mistake there. It's not a correct transcription and it can be a little bit misleading to read it that way. The actual quote inside the book is, there is only one right way to learn how to draw and that is a perfectly natural way. I think what he's talking about here is the only one right way to develop your instinct as an artist and to develop your natural response the only way to learn that is the most truthful way that you can draw, which is a natural way. By natural, he means your individual and unique artistic expression. So if you learn that first, if you learn what your natural way is, then you can't go wrong. That is the right way for you to learn how to draw. So I hope that makes sense. Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you today. Please leave me a comment below if you've got any thoughts about this, if you know this book. And if you don't know this book and you decide to get it after watching this video, I'd love to hear back from you. Let me know what you think. Like the video if you think it was worthwhile, share it with somebody you know who might be interested, and I'll see you in the next video.